In this video, I want to look at the notation our author is using to denote the elements of D3, which is the set of symmetries of an equilateral triangle. The identity uh, permutation, it, or what I like to call the do-nothing, nothing gets moved, and so this particular notation over here simply indicates that nothing got moved. A still is in A, B is still in the B position, C is still in the C position. It's the rest of the symmetries that I actually want to look at in some detail because understanding this kind of notation is not exactly straightforward until you start thinking about what the author is doing. So let's actually look at what this first rotation is actually uh, trying to convey to us. A starts here and it lands there. In other words, A goes to the B spot. And that's what this first column of this two-row notation is supposed to be indicating. A lands in the B spot. If we look at B, B starts here, lands here. So B lands in the C spot. That's what this column is conveying. B goes to C. Finally, we have C started here and it lands here. So C lands in the A spot, and that's what this particular column means. The same kind of thing is done in all of the other permutations. I would encourage you to stop the video, try and sort out exactly why each of these permutations is given by the two-row notation that the author indicates, and then if you get confused, start the video again and see how I wind up justifying the two-row notation for the particular video. So let's start in the second one. A starts here, ends there, so A went to the C spot, and that's exactly what this first column indicates. A goes to C. B starts here and lands there, so B wind up, winds up at the A slot. That's what this column indicates. And C starts here, ends here, so C lands in the B spot, and that is indeed that column. So for the first of the three reflections, what do we have? Well, we have A starts here and lands here. So basically, A didn't get moved, and that's what this particular column indicates. A stayed put. B starts here and lands there, so B went to C. That's what this column indicates. And the final thing is, is C starts here and lands there, so C went back to B, and that's what this column indicates. And the reason this is called a reflection is that we are reflecting across that particular line of symmetry. For our second reflection, we do exactly the same thing. A starts here, lands here. So A went to the C spot, and that's what this first column indicates. B starts here, lands here. So B stayed in the B slot. B stayed in the B slot, and that's what this particular column indicates. And finally, we have C starts here and lands there. So C went into the A slot, and that's what this column indicates. And if I think about what I really did, what I want to notice is that this is indeed a reflection across the line of symmetry that runs from B to the uh, middle of the opposite side. Our last reflection works in exactly the same way as all of the other permutations do. Uh, we start off with A. A starts here and lands there, so A went to B. That's what this column indicates. And then we have B starts here and lands here, so B went to A. And that's what this column indicates.
And finally, we have C starts here and ends there. So C didn't get moved, and that's what that column indicates. And when we start looking at what's going on here in terms of the geometry, we see that this is a reflection along the line of symmetry that I have just drawn. So we have three rotations because this identity rotation is either a 360 degree rotation or a zero degree rotation, and we have three reflections. But more importantly, we can write each one of these symmetries in a two row notation where the idea is always the top row will be the name of the vertices, and the bottom row will be, where does each vertex land? And so this would be F, where F is any one of these six identities. So the identity permutation, these six permutations. So it could be the identity permutation, it could be row one, it could be row two, it could be the first reflection, which the author is calling mu one, the second reflection, which the author is calling mu two, and the third reflection, which the author is calling mu three. The final thing that I want to do in this video is simply introduce these Greek letters in case you are not familiar with them. This P looking thing is officially called Rho, and he is the Greek R. This funny looking M that has a tail at the beginning is named Mu, and that is indeed the Greek M. The final thing that you should realize is that um, we can compose these permutations, and we'll look at that in more detail in the next video.